Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh We are from group 7 And this video is We want to present about Our assignment that we choose Topic the rising of Cost living in Malaysia The project that we Choose is Lebih Hati so next we move to the project's location. The prehatted project is being implemented in all states in Malaysia. This is because this project is one of the efforts made by the government to help Malaysian people during this pandemic. Then we will talk about the target of the project. This prehatted project targets several groups of people in Malaysia. Among them there are B40 and M40 group. This category has been introduced by the National Statistics Department through a study they have done so far based on the salary of B40 and M40. This project also targets single person and student that also affected by this pandemic. There are so many things that done by the government to help them such as BPN and pre hati network to make their ODL process going smooth and then the government also gave one of 150 to the student like uh, average average uh, average 18 years old until 24 years old for the to buy their needed needed on this pandemic and especially for their study for their study Assalamualaikum, my name is Mawada Evan Tisri So, uh, I will uh, present part uh, objective and uh, Bantuan Prihatin is uh, one of the assistance provided by the government in the people uh, carrying economic stimulus uh, package which will be given on uh, one of basic to the uh, P40 and M40 assistant uh, database mail why uh, the national carry assistant for the for for the B40 group is based on the subsystems uh, assistant database. Uh, meanwhile, the national carry assistant for the M40 group is based on tax data from the uh, inland revenue board of Malaysia IRPM. Uh, among those who are eligible to receive a national carry assistance B40 and M40 are the categories that are eligible to receive a national national carry assistance B40 are uh, has follow household marriage or single mother or father we do uh, we over who has reported information on uh, children on BSH uh, 2020 app application and household income uh, is uh, 4,000. Okay, Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Shamil Benzabri and my matrix number is 280321. Today I want to talk about implementation of project. The implementation of the development project Prihatin was done to reactivate the country's economy which was declining due to unexpected arrival of the COVID-19 epidemic uh, based on the strategy and measure that will be implemented it is a manifestation of the government that cares about the welfare and well-being of the people firstly the government will always ensure that the fiscal current current account has surplus and does not use loan. Uh, number two, uh, the measures introduced in the Prihatin package are aimed at ensuring the continued economic activity. Number three, the government will also focus on domestic investment activities that have high multiplier, uh, high multiplier effect and sustained employment. Uh, lastly, the Prime Minister also assured that the federal government would work with the state government. Hi, my name is Nayi Binti Raza. My matrix is number 277081. Now, I will proceed about the Prihati project is under the Who's Minister. 
The Prihatin Project is under the Ministry of Finance Malaysia. Malaysia with the sacks of relief after the Prime Minister Tan Sri Datuk Haji Nuri Yassin announced the list of assistance under the Prihatin Economic Stimulus Package ESP or Prihatin. The Prihatin was unveiled by the Prime Minister on 27 March 2021. Uh, the Ministry outcome the aim to be achieved. COVID-19 pandemic which affect various aspects of life including the country's construction and infrastructure development industries. Second, the government had to deal with external uncertainties, falling commodity prices and limited fiscal space. Now, we go to the suggested budget for the Prihatin project. The government has allocated RM215 billion under the Prihatin Economic Package ESP. Of that numbers, almost RM128 billion will be generated to the protect the welfare of the people. RM100 billion to support business including small and medium enterprise SMEs and RM2 billion to strengthen the country's economy. Meanwhile, a total of RM20 billion have been announced in the previous stimulus package. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to Professor Dr. Roslan bin Abdul Hakim. My name is Muhammad Iqmal Hakim bin Azman and my metric number is 281785. First of all, I want to talk about expected outcome. First goal of the Prihatin project is to protect the people. It has several economic stimulus packages that concern the people which are Bantuan Prihatin National BPN approved for 162 million. Next is Deferment of Perubadanan Tabung Pembangunan Kemahiran, which is PTPK. Loan repayment can be deferred, then support to handle difficult times, packages, and the last package in the first goal is a special assistance package. The second goal is to provide business support. There are four business support economic stimulus packages. This increase the assistance of special facilities for SMEs. Increase the cash flow of company owners, guarantees scheme facility, and a six month moratorium on loan repayment. The ultimate goal in the expected outcome is to strengthen the economy, giving stimulus packages to all groups B40, M40, SMB, economic activity, and others. For the Malaysian economy performance in 2019, Malaysia go through with four quarter in 2019. For the first quarter, Malaysia recorded a growth of 4.5 percent. All sectors of the economy recorded positive growth except the mining and querying sectors. The second quarter, Malaysia economy expands 4.9 percent after recording a growth 4.5 percent in first quarter in. 2019 and all sectors recorded a positive growth same as first quarter. For the third quarter, Malaysia economy dropped 4.4% in the third quarter lower than growth recorded in second quarter. The slower growth was primarily due to lower growth in the key sectors and declining decline in the mining and construction activities. For the last quarter, uh, fourth quarter, Malaysia economy grew to 3.6 cent, which is the lowest 41 quarters uh, since quarter, quarter 3 in 2019. The annual growth in 2019 was affected by supply disruption, particularly in the community sectors. That's all for me. Thank you.
Next, I will continue the background section of the problem and issues. Project Pihatin was implemented immediately because of the pandemics that plagued the world. The government provided DPN to reduce the burden of the people in the movement control order, which is MCO, situation where some economic sectors had to be closed. The VPN implemented is due to the rising cost of living in the pandemic period. First of all, it is due to unemployment. This is so because the business sector that has a high demand for products is experiencing a recession in revenue. Supply is also processing in a slow state and new economic generation is not doing because people are trying to sustain existing businesses to get on with life. So product demand is very weak and purchasing power is limited due to limited supply. Rising food price also one of the problems and issues. Cost of living is closely related to household spending on necessities and services. The consumption price index which is CPI is measured by the increase in the price of goods and services. The non-alcoholic food and the beverage category dominated 30% of the total household spending basket and was followed by the housing utilities and fuel at category 24%. Income in 2020 can only afford to cover the cost of living necessities such as food. This is said because a food expenditure covers 80% and above for the B40 group. The low income group is particularly vulnerable to the risk of rising prices of essential goods. So, uh, part uh, important of the issue, uh, the rising cost of living is a major problem for Malaysia. The increase is uh, in the price of uh, good is uh, said not to be uh, be in line with the rate of in increase in salaries and wage uh, compared to the my budget uh, report provided by the employees provide uh, fund EPF uh, uh, fund EPF and individual who use public transport has to spend a large amount a month why a couple with uh, two children need twist a month to cover family expenses so uh, this expenses uh, co cover for food housing health uh, transportation utilities uh, personal care item and one of purchase uh, this amount will be higher if they use uh, uh, they use um, their own uh, vehicle plus have uh, to pay their uh, such as uh, loan from the national highest educational fund corporation ptpta although uh, the average salary and with resources uh, by the urban population uh, access the expenditure required uh, for the single individual uh, categories it is estimate uh, that a large uh, number of uh, urban residents thank you the objective of this assignment is to look at the cause of the rising cost of living by examining the main factors to the rising cost of living, namely unemployment and rising food price. The second objective of this assignment is to know how to reduce the dependence of economy on foraging economy. Okay guys, hi and assalamualaikum everyone. My name is Siti Nordiana Shahira, number matrix is 279408. So here I will discuss. I'll, I will discuss about the proposed solution issue of rising cost in Malaysia. So here we go. So the first solution from government is increased domestic production to prevent the rising cost of living or the rising cost living caused by the inflation. The government the government need to take prudent measure from for the long term. 
when the government do the solution, the price of food in the market will be lower than the import product. And then, basically, increased production of our own product in the country will help in erasing the issue. The benefit from this solution also is indirectly open up employment and employment opportunities for Malaysian people. This is because order to this because in order in case the production of suspicion manpower is essential. This also will help for those who are still unemployed, unemployed to generate income and contribute to the national economy. So next solution is to the society. First is plan your expenses prudently. To survive in this age of soaring commodity price, host all or all community the, the, uh, communities their daily or month expenses. Therefore, aiming the step that can be done is buy essential items such as house items, groceries, and food uh, on the sales or warehouse sale. It also will help you to save your budget by, uh, on buying buying the sale item. And buying the sale also Buying the sell item also can make you buy in a larger quantity because the price of food will be lower than the regular price. Second, for the solution for the for the society is you need to bring your own food to workplace because when you because when you bring your own food to the workplace you can cut your budget and for your for your information average uh, Malaysian people spend their lunch is un uh, it's around 10 ringgit until 20 ringgit only for lunch so it also make the your make you affect by the rising cost in the malaysia and and then the benefit you can take from this 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 solution also you can make sure your food is very hygiene and you also can increase the discipline because you need to wake up early and prepare your breakfast or lunch so that you are you so that you are find your solution and in the same time you can take the advantage from that solution next projects proposed by the government the government is implementing three initiatives or strategies in prehatin projects the most important initiative undertaken initially was addressing the effects of covid 19 among its initiatives is to facilitate cash flow to affected businesses. Tax payment in installments can be different for the affected tourism sector. The first initiative for the tourism sector is individual tax relief of up to 1,000 ringgit Malaysia on domestic tourism use. Secondly, the government allocates digital vouchers for domestic tourism and the last one is loosening regulations and restricting the use of hotels by government agencies. The second initiative is catalyzing people-centered growth. First initiative step for the people's assistance is to reduce the employee provident fund contribution rate by 4% from 11% to 7%. The second effective relief measure for the initiative is a rural stimulation. Additional allocations are given for minor infrastructure, repair works across the country, especially in rural areas. Allocations provided by the government through and channel to the state government. Additional revenue will be given to projects that are being implemented through the Voting method from 50,000 to 100,000. Last but not least, encourage quality investment. Certain sectors, such as the Ministry of Energy Science, Technology, Environment, and Climate Change, will open bids to attract investors, especially in private investment. In addition, the government will also promote higher value private investment through investment in the yearly and early stages of growth. Bank Negara Malaysia, BNM, also provides SME automation and digitization facilities. Capital allowance are further accelerated for expenditure on, mach on machinery and necessities over a two-year period. The business premises renovation tax deduction will be allowed. Lastly, import duty tax and sales tax on importation and purchase of equipment are presented for three years.